<laughs> hey guys, so I am shooting on the EM1X with a 7 to 14 millimeter lens and all the way open and it feels like I'm in a bad Beastie Boys video from the 90s. Uh, let's zoom in to a normal, respectable focal length. There we go. Alright, so for tonight's video, I'm going to go out and take some pictures of the moon. I'm going to be using the EM1 Mark III, the 300 millimeter f4 and also the 2x converter this whole system together will make an equivalent of a 1200 millimeter lens and with that much reach you can get really good detailed shots of the moon i'm going to be taking some just single exposures some single exposures in a series to stack and also some using this camera's high resolution shooting mode which shifts the pixels and makes a composite image which replicates like a 50 megapixel sensor and this is a 20 megapixel so it gives you way more data to work with and i'll show you guys my settings once i'm out there and then a little bit of post-processing when we're done i'll see you out there So real quick, before we jump out there, to stack the moon pictures, it could be useful to grab something like this. This is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer tracker. This tracker actually moves your camera with counter to the rotation of the Earth, so it keeps the moon and the stars relatively still. And this is used a lot for astrophotography, so you can take really long exposures of the stars. But the moon is so bright that you don't need to take a long exposure. You can take one at like 200th of a second or 500th of a second. But if you want to stack your images to reduce noise and increase the detail, this tracker can be useful because it keeps the moon in the same spot and just makes things easier in post-processing. But I'm going to show you guys how I stack these images and align them in Photoshop or in a program called Sequitur and you don't need a tracker to take these shots and stack them. It helps, but for tonight, we're gonna leave it inside and just go out with this and a basic tripod setup. <sighs> it's June and it's still cold out. <sighs> Welcome to the Rockies. Anyways, I'm out here. I got my EM1X set up and I'm taking some pictures of the moon. I did forget to mention that a really important part is something like this. It's a uh, a newer brand intervalometer. Yeah, I'm just using it as a shutter release cable. You can use the cell phone app or really anything that will release the shutter without having to actually touch the camera. When you're shooting with this long of a focal length, and anything less than like a thousandth of a second you're gonna get a little bit of motion blur so i got this set up and i can just click away at it <sighs> it is cold out to focus the camera i have it set on the single focus mode and i put the little box right on the moon and this camera does a great job at auto focusing for me so i don't have to worry about that and I know that it's in good focus and I can just click away. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take a bunch of single images and stack them for noise and clarity and details. So I have this set up on the sequential shooting mode. I'm just gonna hold down this button for a few seconds and I'll get 20 or 30 shots that I can stack. My settings for this are 400th of a second and 400 ISO and F8 because of this teleconverter, that's the minimum I can do. And I'm using the histogram to make sure that my highlights are not blown out, but they're still bright enough and I can get a lot of detail out of them. So I'm having to recompose once in a while because the moon is moving, but I can hold down this button halfway just like I would the shutter button on the camera and the autofocus will do its thing for me. I'm going to take a couple more shots to make sure I got it. Alright, so that'll be enough of the just single shots and the simple ones. I'm going to turn on the high resolution mode on this camera and see how much of a difference that makes. 
Now I have that high resolution mode on and I set the delay to 4 seconds just to make sure everything is super stable when I go ahead and take the shot. I'm going to test the difference between the handheld and the tripod mode for the high resolution image. I think the handheld mode doesn't give you as high of a resolution but we're going to test that out right now. I'm actually going to take about 5 of these so I can stack the high res shots in Photoshop and get it I, it's just for fun at this point now the moon is moving quite a bit so I'm not sure how this stack is gonna go but it's all part of the experiment and I'll show you guys on my computer what the results from this is it's just finishing up with a fifth one on the handheld mode I'm gonna switch to the tripod mode and recompose because the moon is actually moved from like here to here in my frame now I'm in the tripod mode, and it is a good tip if you are doing pictures of the moon with especially this high resolution mode to start off with the moon off to the side, this edge of your frame, and it will move as you're shooting across. So if you start here, you should not have to recompose while you're doing the process of capturing high res images to stack. And I'm also double checking my focus by clicking on the screen and zooming in to the moon and then I'm moving the moon around and putting the focusing box on the edge where all the craters are. It's the highest contrast part of the moon and it gives you the best chance of the autofocusing, autofocus working well. I'm wondering if because I'm not using a tracker, if the handheld mode for this is actually better. It makes sense in a way because how this works is it takes you take your initial image and then the camera takes the time to reposition the sensor and take additional images and then composite it into one image so in the time the camera takes to do that it's possible the moon has moved it's interesting to think about i'm going to go into manual focus mode just to see if i can get any closer it's so so touchy so right now I'm taking manual focus high res image with the tripod mode on. Okay, I think I got enough images with the high res mode on. I'm going to go back to the, just the sequential shooting, capture some more images to stack, and I think we'll be done for tonight. Okay, I got a whole bunch of pictures there and we can stack them. It's really cool. I'm going to bring you in and actually look at the back of this screen because you can actually see the moon moving in the LCD. Watch this. I'm going to take a little bit of video of the moon and we're going to call it quits for tonight, but I will show you guys what this looks like on the computer. All right, everybody. So last night was pretty fun. I got some sleep and then dove into these images this morning and got some kind of interesting results. So I'm excited to share it with you. Let's jump into my screen now. Here you're seeing five different images. The first one here is just a single uh, regular resolution image. This one is a 10 stack in Photoshop of the regular resolution image. This one is the high res image on the handheld mode. This is the high res image on the tripod mode. And this is a stack from 48 images through sequitur. Comparing the stack to images, I actually prefer the way Photoshop handled the stacking. So in order to do that, I grabbed this image and 10 that I shot sequentially right next to it, opened it up into Photoshop by right clicking and clicking on merge to panorama in Photoshop. Then that brings up another dialog box where you unclick the merge photos together. What this is doing is just automatically aligning all of those images together and then you can convert it to a smart object, set that smart object's blending mode to median, 
and then rasterize that image. So that will stack all the images together. The reason I use median instead of mean, both are good for reducing noise, but the median helps to reduce any random things that you want to get rid of. So if there was a satellite or a plane flying through or anything that you don't want there, the median is the way to go. So I prefer how this turned out to the sequitur one, but now let's compare the median stacked 10 images with the exact same file that's not stacked. So on the right you have just the edited file, on the left you have the stacked. One thing you can see even without zooming in is that there's more texture, detail, and color in the stacked one. I edited these exactly the same and I even gave the unstacked one a little extra help to try to bring it to this level, but when you go through that stacking process it just cleans up the image so much. Now if we zoom in to 100%, and I promise I'm going to learn the name of all these craters, here you can really see the effects and the benefits of stacking. Just look at this crater right here and see how much cleaner it is as opposed to over here where it's kind of pixelated and smudgy. This isn't the lens's fault, the lens is super sharp, but I would blame this on atmospheric variances where you get heat waves or tiny clouds or water vapor will pass through the scene at any given moment. So when you do take 10 or more, however many you can, images and stack them, you will eliminate again those kind of random weird things and you're left with a much higher quality image. Now looking at these side by side without zooming in, they both look very nice. So you don't have to stack your moon photos, but as you can tell from zooming in and looking at all these details, it definitely helps to clean everything up. Like on the right here, this is not a perfect circle. It's kind of smudgy and weird. And over here, you can see it's a nice round perfect circle. So stacking moon photos definitely is a big help. Now let's compare the two different stacking modes. If you remember, I was saying last night that I wasn't sure how the tripod and handheld high res modes would work because I wasn't tracking the moon. So as it's capturing the additional images to combine to make that high res image, I was concerned that the moon's motion would throw it off. So let's look at 100% on both of these images. On the left, you have the tripod high res mode, which I now know gives you a higher resolution than the handheld one. But if you look at the details, again, we're looking at the same crater, the handheld one seems to have done a better job. I'm not sure if that's because you're telling the camera to think about aligning it a little bit better than the tripod mode, but the results speak for themselves. There is a lot better detail, even though you can zoom in tighter at 100% crop on the tripod mode, the one on the right you can see is definitely a little bit cleaner. So now let's compare this high resolution handheld with the stacked not high resolution. Now we have the, the high resolution handheld mode on the left and the stacked on the right. From just looking at this at full view, the high resolution mode looks cleaner. And none of these have very much sharpening applied to them. So it's not like a weird artifacts, but I think it's just a little bit nicer. Now, we can look at this crater here, and it's not really a fair comparison to go one to one. So I'm gonna to try to replicate the field of view in both of these. So I'm going to unlock them, click the high res and zoom out. Just a little bit. Now it's a fairly close comparison. And if you look at the details on this one on the right, you can see again the high resolution mode is quite a bit cleaner. There's a little bit of artifacting right around this crater. You can look up towards the top and the high resolution mode just looks way cleaner. So my conclusions from my not that scientific experiments seems to be that the high resolution mode is the way to go for these uh, moon pictures. 
And I think if you took even more of these high resolution ones and stacked them, that might be the very best way to get the maximum image quality of the moon using this here setup. Again, I'm on the 300 millimeter 2X converter, EM1 Mark III, high resolution handheld mode, even though I was on a tripod, and I got a really cool detailed picture of the moon. So now let's talk about the focusing system. If you remember last night, I was in single focus mode, not continuous, and I would tap on the moon or move that little box on there. And then I would hold my intervalometer button down just halfway and you could see the moon go, you know, pulse in and out of focus and then it would lock. And then I would click the picture. And that seemed to be the best way I could focus. To prove that, let's go to these two stacked images and the one on the right was manually focused. So I zoomed in all the way and micro adjusted that lens till I thought it was in good focus. But I don't think that's quite true. If we zoom in and look around, you can see that the right side is way out of focus compared to the left. We'll give it a second to load. There, now it's done loading. So again, the right side of your screen is my manual focusing and the left side of your screen is the autofocus from the Olympus. So I gotta give it to the autofocus, at least for the moon. I still need to test out the star autofocus and see how well that works. But for the moon, again, I was on the single autofocus, used my intervalometer, held the button halfway down, it focused on the moon, then I clicked it. The one on the right, I was trying to manually do, and it looks like I lost. So go Olympus, you beat me on the focus test. So in conclusion, using this camera, the best way to get the most high quality moon pictures without a tracker, in my opinion, is to automatically focus with that half click on your intervalometer and use the handheld high resolution mode. Now, I think you could go even further and stack these images if you shot 10 or so of them and get a cleaner image, but I'm super happy with this. This is a file I know I can print with confidence. It looks gorgeous and I can pull it even a little further if I wanted to exaggerate those colors, but I think I like this edit. So I hope this video has been helpful. Again, I love this camera. I'm going to use it as much as I can until I have to get it back. And the next thing we're going to do is go out and test some of the different shooting modes and focusing modes with some wildlife. So be on the look for that video coming out in a few days. Please give me that thumbs up. It's a huge help to my channel. I'm growing slowly and I real, really appreciate all of your guys' support. Subscribe, send it to your friends if you think they'd find it interesting. And when the stars are out, I'll see you there. Can't pretend to take a picture of you guys with the lens cap on. There we go. Click.